Hey everybody, welcome to this month's question of the month. If you've got a question, go to yoganatomy.com forward slash my question and I'll get to it. I'll answer it here on video just like I'm doing today. So the first question is a really good one. It's a little bit long, but it's a good question. Um, it's from Louise and she says, if generally speaking, when we are belly breathing, we are more relaxed and if this type of breathing is more tied to a parasympathetic response, but chest breathing is more connected to sympathetic arousal, is there a chance that our asana practice, in this case, she's referring to Ashtanga, can leave us feeling a little agitated or overstimulated? Even though we slow and deepen the breath in the finishing postures, we are still essentially chest breathing throughout the whole practice. We may return to involuntary breathing during, during Shavasana, but is this enough to bring about balance? Or, does the physical act of asana counteract the fight or flight effect of chest breathing? In my experience, I notice that a strong asana practice energizes me, but can almost leave me a little anxious, and I feel I have to be mindful of this. I think I breathe quite well with inhalations, exhalations of equal length and tone. I realize there are often many factors outside of practice that will come into play, but I've tried to factor these in when thinking about this for myself, and still find myself wondering. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Many thanks for all that I do. All right, it's a really good question and um, we're gonna have to be specific and then broaden out a little bit here. Um, one is, let's talk about chest breathing versus belly breathing. And um, Luis is right, you know, there is some general sense that abdominal or belly breathing is more relaxed. It's what we naturally do when we're not applying a particular technique. So, and, and therefore that is correlated to a parasympathetic uh, response, parasympathetic being rest, digest, right? Um, versus chest breathing, which has a general correlation towards sympathetic arousal. Um, but that doesn't mean that just because you chest breathe, your sympathetic nervous system is flying off the charts. Just like just because you belly breathe doesn't mean, you know, you're flatlining down into parasympathetic arousal. Um, so these are mild shifts and changes. And then it's, you know, there's also the possibility that your general tone of your nervous system is creating sympathetic arousal regardless of what you do. And she refers to that. There's other things outside of practice that can affect this, right? So sometimes it's the nervous system being stimulated by other things that causes you to breathe in a particular way. Increase respiration, right? When you get scared, fight or flight, this whole, that whole mechanism is designed to increase your heart rate, um, change your breathing, dilate your eyes so you can see, you know, more clearly and further, etc. Right, so, I mean, we're talking about yoga practice here. We're not talking about running away from a saber-toothed tiger or anything. The other thing to consider is, you know, there's also this association, generally speaking, belly breathing is good, chest breathing is bad. And I talk about this a lot in workshops. I do a whole anatomy of breath workshop where I talk about this um, to give you the the shortest version of it. Um, there's nothing wrong with belly breathing. We do it all the time. Chest breathing is typically done as a technique and just by virtue of it being a technique that's being applied for a period of time, it's neither good nor bad either. It's trying to create a particular effect. Um, and it's not good or bad. It's both of these types of breathing, whether you're breathing with your ab you know, into your belly, as we say. And of course, we're not literally bringing the air in and pushing it into our belly, right? The belly is moving out because the diaphragm is descending. When we chest breathe or belly breathe, the air is getting into our lungs because our diaphragm is descending, generally speaking. There is a change there though. When we chest breathe as a technique, we hold our abdomen in, which changes some things anatomically that brings the air into, well, the air is always going into the lungs, but it prevents the abdomen from pushing out 
So not only does the diaphragm try to descend, but actually what happens is the ribs expand first to make the space, right? Because the diaphragm is actually restricted, not from contracting, not from contracting, but from descending because you're holding your abdominal contents in. There's a very big difference between um, being blocked because it's weak or too tight or because you're applying a technique to hold your abdomen in and prevent it from descending, which then changes the dynamics of how the ribs function along with the diaphragm. That's it. It's still diaphragmatic breathing, whether it's chest or abdominal. The difference is when you're at rest, not practicing, not applying a technique, and your chest breathing, or worse, your neck muscles, see how they contract when I take a fast uh, in inhalation? If these are functioning when you're at rest, that's a problem. If you're not breathing into your relaxed abdomen, not applying a technique, there could be a problem there as well. So if you're chest breathing at rest, yeah, this is something you should pay attention to can be causing sympathetic arousal or as a result of sympathetic stuff, or it could be an anatomical problem. It could be diaphragmatic issues, okay? That's like a separate thing, but I wanna kind of tease that out because it, it all relates to how we approach this idea of belly breathing versus chest breathing, and then we naturally tie that to sympathetic and parasympathetic. I think the better way to think about all of this in terms of practice is, you know, we, we have this natural ebb and flow between parasympathetic being on the bottom, sympathetic being on the top. We kind of ebb and flow between the two throughout the day. And when we practice and we kind of nudge things towards sympathetic and towards parasympathetic, depending on what we do, if we're doing a resting pose, maybe things calm down a little bit, you know, then we lift up, jump back, do a vinyasa, it's possible that in those moments that we, you know, push things towards sympathetic again. This ebb and flow is, the way I think about it anyway, is like it's exercise for the nervous system in the long term, right? Instead of thinking of, and Luis isn't doing this, but I'm saying instead of thinking of one, uninhalation being associated with parasympathetic or sympathetic, or even a single practice being associated with this, it's the long view. What is the accumulation of practicing and exercising that nervous system? Where does that lead? And I think that's where we're ultimately heading with this. So even if your practice does make you feel agitated or slightly you know, more anxious or whatever, I would still hold the long view of where it's all leading. And yes, yeah, so that doesn't mean you don't look at an individual practice. Is the person holding their breath in places which can lead to, you know, stimulation? Or, you know, there are things to look at. Um, you know, it could be things like the amount of effort being applied or lack of effort being applied or, um, you know, general stress tendencies of performance or imposter or whatever that is also mixing into this. So certainly you would want to look at it and Luis is doing that. She's taking as objective a view as she can of herself and trying to figure out what's going on. I'm just bringing it back to, we have to be careful with um, the most simplistic ways in which we tend to think about anatomy and, and physiology as well. You know, chest breathing, sympathetic arousal, belly breathing, parasympathetic arousal. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Uh, it just doesn't. You can, you could be chest breathing and be very relaxed in your nervous system. For sure. Um, you could, you could breathe without holding your abdomen in and chest breathing and you, you could have sympathetic arousal going on. They're not, they're correlated. They're not causative necessarily. I think that's a better way to think about it. Okay, all right. Uh, I hope that all made sense. You've got the individual thing, but then you've got to expand outward, take the long view. 
All right, everyone. Whew. If you've got a good question like Louise's, feel free to go to yoganatomy.com forward slash my question and I'll answer it for you.